Hello, hello Libra. Welcome to your mid-2019 overview reading. This is good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Libra, and this is going to cover from July to December of 2019, so I hope you enjoy this video. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. It'll give you notifications for when I upload new videos so you can get all of the information that you would like. And please follow me on Instagram at Onyx Healing. I put out lots of other readings and content and fun stuff. And I also have a podcast if you're interested in intuition and metaphysical stuff in general. So there's lots of info there as well. And if you want to know which decks I use, they're always listed in the description box. So let me throw this spread down and then we will get started. Okay, let's start here with the Threads of Fate. We have Release. So there might be something coming up that just isn't working anymore or is preventing you from actually going in the direction that you want to go. Pay close attention to the things that hold you back or are taking up so much energy that you can't actually do what you want to do. That's the type of stuff that you want to let go of and you want to shed. So you can see this card, it's depicted as a frog that's kind of jumping from this little plant here and moving forward in the direction that it wants. So I think this is representative of you actually making strides as a result of letting go of all of the clutter, releasing the things that are taking up too much energy. Okay, and then we also have strength. You are hereby declared a strong, resilient warrior of heroic proportions. Enjoy your battles, whatever they are, because you're guaranteed to come through them stronger, brighter, and more compassionate. And based on what I know of mythology, probably with great hair and a six-pack. So this is like, you do have the strength to make this happen. I know that release can be really hard. There's a lot of limiting beliefs that come up anytime you're letting go of something. What if I don't get something as good? What if I never have that opportunity again? What if I can't actually make it through? What if I'm making the wrong decision? What if I'm not going to be, what if it never gets repaired? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that can create friction, but this is reminding you that you do have the strength, you do have the wherewithal, you do have the ability to do it. It's just up to you to act on that. Now let's see what else is coming up. We have daydream, cultivate aimlessness, allow yourself to fantasize about the possibilities, even if they seem unattainable, find a comfy spot, let the project, let the project breathe itself into you. This is something that I think has been coming up in a lot of the sessions that I've been doing with people as far as giving yourself permission to daydream and fantasize a little bit more. I know it seems really counterintuitive, like what good would that possibly do? But you might be surprised by what can shift as a result of you spending a little bit more time feeling into those experiences that you're desiring. Now, this reading is much different than anything I've ever done before, so I hope you enjoy it. It's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure spread. So these three cards in the center, what I'd like you to do is pick one. Just pick a single card, maybe take a deep breath into the diaphragm. Just pick one. This is going to be your central energy for the rest of 2019. So just, that's why it, it's going to get too muddy if you pick more than one. If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video, but I'm going to pull this first card here. We have the High Priestess focusing on feeling. I'm not surprised to see the High Priestess making an appearance as you have the Daydream card popping up. The High Priestess knows how to daydream in the right ways where it, it, the High Priestess can allow herself to kind of fall into the picture of the desired reality and those feelings are what can help you manifest that faster. So I think this is going to be a practice of aligning the internal state so that you can manifest the external reality and then also letting go of the things that are not serving you. So that's the important piece there. 
Now card number two, we have the Eight of Cups. This is about a shift in perspective. The way you're seeing things now is not the same way you'll see things six months from now. So just take it in stride. You know, you don't have to have every piece of the puzzle solved right this moment. You just have to keep moving in the direction that feels best to you. So try to honor that. Um, do your best to just kind of go with the flow and understand that your mindset is under it's kind of like it's under construction. So allow more information to like, like you want to invite the information so you don't jump to any conclusions. That's kind of what the eight of cups is helping you with. And it's also waking up to a lot of information. You might realize that what you were doing before isn't the right strategy for you, or that isn't the right way to go about things for what you want. So this is about going and editing all of that as you go and waking up to more and more of that insight. Card number three, we have death, rebirth, transformation, shifting things, making things expand in a way that you never realized was possible. We are constantly in a state of death and rebirth. We go through these cycles all throughout our life. So it's not something to fear, it's something to capitalize on. If you notice that there's you're you're kind of going through that transitional period you know the the release card is also a necessary part of the death experience letting go having that internal strength and moving forward knowing that there is a brighter future ahead even if it seems uncomfortable in the moment and so for you it's about holding holding space for what it is that you do want and desire as things kind of restructure and reorganize around you now this up here, this is what's moving out of your life in the second half of 2019. We have the Ten of Cups. I'm going to clarify this because this is kind of a funky card to have in the shifting out energy. I'm getting that maybe this was complacency. So sometimes if you get a little bit too comfortable, remember that humans, we want to learn. We want to grow. We want to evolve. That's our, our natural state is to remember and get the information that we may have lost before we came onto Earth. So to clarify the Ten of Cups, I have the Page of Cups. Yeah, so this was perhaps your preferences are shifting as well and you're releasing maybe something you've worked for. Maybe you worked really hard, you achieved that thing, and now you realize it no longer fits and so you have to release it or let it go. It could also be that you were just kind of at a plateau. And in order to break out of a plateau or any type of stagnation, you have to get uncomfortable. You have to either follow your intuition, change your perspective, or let the old die away. And so the, the strength card is showing that something bigger and better is for you on the horizon, even if you thought, well, this is as good as it gets, or I, I've worked so hard already to get here, you know, why would I want anything else? A lot of that stuff can come up or whatever, but my point is that your preferences may have been changing and evolving, so what you've worked for before may not fit anymore. The oncoming energy for you is the Ten of Swords. Oh, I, I know this scares people, right? Like the idea of having to let go or the idea of change or the idea of things no longer being the same. And I, I understand why that's scary. You know, I'm not, I'm not immune to being resistant to change, but I'm going to clarify this for you as well. So to clarify the 10 of swords, we have the nine of cups. Ah, here it is. This is wishes fulfilled and dreams coming true. You're not going to get this without this. So you can stay if you want. You can just stay in your cushy little ten of cups. You can stay in that place and not grow and expand. But this is like the real deal. The nine of cups is all the wishes fulfilled and dreams coming true. But the necessary condition on this is the release. It is the upgrade. It is the discomfort, the growing pains, letting go of what no longer resonates and no longer works. And that can feel painful because you're embodied. When you're embodied, it comes with pain. Like <laughs> that's a part of the deal. So the nine of cups is just reminding you that it's a necessary condition. 
And the Ten of Swords is about the release component. It's not about pain and destruction. Pain is just a part of embodiment, like I just said. But the, the Ten of Swords is the process of releasing. It doesn't mean catastrophe is on the horizon. I, people misunderstand that. This is saying in order for you to open up to your desires and for you to be available to all of the things that you want, you, you have to let go of what's cluttering your space, of what's taking up that room of where you could have the Nine of Cups make an appearance. If the Ten of Cups became boring or if it kind of had you maxed out, this is saying this is that upgrade that you're getting in the second half of 2019. This card down here is what you need to know. Now, if you'd like to take a moment, you can set an intention on what area of your life you would like this to apply to. Maybe you have a question or you are like, what's going on with my love life or what's going on with my money? Whatever it is for you, this is going to apply to that. And we have the lovers. It's part connection, part decision making because the the lovers can also represent a choice between two things but I'm also getting that your like your community and your connections are really going to matter so this is really obvious if you are interested in your love life I, I do love and relationship readings on patreon but for, for this is more general so yes this is like a a golden card if you are interested in romantic relationships and your love life and everything. It, but it's also like you're still going to have to go through the decluttering process, the release process in order to step into this. Now, for those of you that are focused on more of like the tangible or material things, this has to do with the connections and what you're saying yes to. So keep that in mind, carry that with you throughout this next half of the year. And just Know that it's about who you know, not what you know, <laughs> and that's really going to help bolster you and, and push you into that next stage or that next chapter of your life. So focus on the connections, focus on the community, and that's going to be a big help. You're gifted in relationships. That's something that even if, even if you have like trauma that's been worked out or something like that, having Libra energy makes you more receptive to relationships and, and like communal dynamics and, and partnerships in a lot of ways. So use that to your advantage. Now let's get into the timeline. We have the first, second, third, and fourth quarter. That's going to be where you end the year of 2019. And these quarters are about six weeks, so a month and a half, give or take. So let's see what's going on with this first quarter. We have the Ace of Pentacles. Maybe you're working on something new, something fresh. Maybe you've started something and initiated something. So this is, this is a good seed being planted card. I'm just getting that a lot of it is starting or beginning. Maybe there's something you're sitting on until Mercury goes direct. There could be a lot of stuff like that that's in the works. New job, new opportunity, new relationship, new, 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 new. It's that initiation and watching that seed grow. The second quarter, we have the Knight of Cups. Be honest about how you feel. There's no point in hiding your emotions. This is going to be more of a sensitive time. And so you can use this use this energy that you have in this second quarter to really get in touch with your desires. Remember that as we go through life, it's a constant process of getting in touch with that. And then as as a result, going through the death and rebirth cycle, that's kind of the necessary, the necessary experience of being human. So the Knight of Cups is just reminding you to not hold back emotionally, not prevent yourself from making moves emotionally, but instead embrace them, step into them, honor them, and reflect them back to people as well. Third quarter, we have the Page of Wands. You're going to need to go through and check everything that you've been working on. Check in with yourself. Is there anything that you want to edit or improvise or is there something that you want to not work on as much or put a little bit more energy into? I think that as you shift here, because this represents the equinox, right? It, it's going to be the um, fall equinox if you're in the northern hemisphere or the spring equinox if you're in the southern hemisphere. And so that's a good time to 
just kind of set an intention for what it is that you want during this this final push or this final quarter of 2019 because you want to go through and evaluate as you go and I think that this is going to be the time to do that so you can take inventory then. And wrapping up 2019, we have the Ten of Cups. Okay, see, this is why you don't want to be afraid of the Ten of Swords or any experiences that you're having, any of those growing pains. Because I, who said this? I think it was Danielle Laporte. But one of my favorite things is like the, the universe only trades up. And that's so true. The principle of that is very, very true. You're not going to like get gypped unless you have some programming that that has you believing that and so you progressively think think and believe that things get worse and worse that's not reality that's just programming so what this is saying is that anything you've lost is going to actually be restored or come back tenfold or get even better anything that you've released here with uh this ten of swords whatever you got rid of and cleared out, it's going to come back and, and be even better than you imagined. So you can really count on that this next half of the year is that your hard work will end up, any, any of the discomfort that you've had or any of the changes that you've made have payoff. I like to remind people that you're in control. This isn't something that happens without effort. It's also something that's not a guarantee because as I like to remind you, you can do nothing. You don't have to take action. You don't have to make any changes. You don't you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So it's it's all up to you. You absolutely have the power to create whatever it is that you want. Now let's do a three card pick. This one's flexible. So it's an oracle deck, but you can pick as few or as many cards as you like. If you need more time, pause it. I'm going to start reading card number one. The All-Knower. You already have the information that you need. I think that it's like you're just checking in along the way, but you have all the information that you need. I don't, I don't think there's like... A, uh, specifically about whatever you're asking about or like if you've asked about oh what's going on with this partner I think what you see is what you get I don't think there's more that needs to be unveiled I don't think you're gonna see more or discover more with like that that job you're asking about or that opportunity you're asking about or that partnership it's kind of like you've what's said what's mapped out what's there is super clear and I think that's where you want to make a decision or uh, navigate from that place of already knowing. Card number two, we have the death of the deceitful. This has to do with your mindset, getting an upgrade, and it's like the deceitful as in programming, as in maybe what you were told as a child or, or what you believed early on or some early traumas that shaped your decision making and perception of the world it seems like any any of that negative programming or belief systems that are not serving you that is what's dying away falling away getting an upgrade card number three we have smother Watch your energetic investment I'm getting that you might actually if you're pouring so much energy and throwing energy at a situation you might suffocate it right kind of like if you if you like grabbed a cat and started like just loving it to death right it would start to backlash it would start to freak out on you more than likely so what you want to do is be a little bit more mindful of not smothering the situation but still applying yourself at, at a pace that makes sense for you. So just check in if you're if you're falling into like obsession or being overly fixated on something in a way that's distracting you from the rest of your life, then you know you're smothering. So just take your foot off the gas a little bit. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. I absolutely appreciate you more than you could possibly know. Don't forget, if you didn't watch your all three of your sun, moon, and rising, make sure you check out your other videos. And you can check out your Mars and Venus if you're a triple sign, so if you have the same sun, moon, or rising signs. But I also want to let you know if you are interested in 
topics about intuition, being psychic, all things esoteric and metaphysical, check out my podcast. It is super, super awesome. I have loved doing it. So please check that out. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Onyx Healing. If you need to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you know I'm always available for you. So the description box has all of the links to work with me as well as my meditations, my podcast, all of that good stuff. And don't forget, if you would like the mid-2019 overview love and relationship reading, those are now out on Patreon bundled with the July reading. So you get two readings in one on those videos if you'd like to check that out. Otherwise, I also do month or weekly assigned specific readings for Patreon as well every Friday. So all of that good stuff is available to you. Check out the description box for anything that you're interested in or if you just want some more content. And go ahead and have a beautiful rest of the year, everybody. I am sending you so much support, so much love, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.